Hey everyone, welcome to today's Modern Farmhouse Table Makeover. If you're new, I'm Becca and I would love for you to hit that subscribe button and join the family. And let's hop right into today's video. I had gotten this table off Marketplace a few months ago for, I think it was $60, so relatively inexpensive. I knew that I wanted to, you know, do something different with it. I didn't want to leave it just the way it was. And it took me a while to figure out how I wanted to do it, but I figured it out. So I figured I would take you guys along on the journey because I know some of you really enjoyed these makeover style videos and these DIYs. I'm really not a fan of the hardware that is on this piece of furniture. So I knew I wanted to change that out for sure. I really didn't like these little pendant things. So I just took a razor blade and kind of got in behind it and pushed it out. It's got two little like nail like uh, things that hold it in and you can just pop them right out. To fill those little tiny holes from the pendants, I'm going to use this wood filler. Honestly, it's just what I had on hand. I have used this in the past before, but you can get wood filler, you know, from Lowe's or any hardware store. And this one was a stainable one because the last project I used it on, it actually was going to be stained. So I went ahead and made sure that it was stainable, but this did the job in, I had this gash right here. So I figured since I was filling in those little holes, I would fill in that gash as well. Now that the wood filler is dry, we're going to go ahead and take this sanding block. This was a 120 sanding block and you're just going to flatten out the area where you put the wood filler. So it blends in. I did find that when I used the wood filler on uh, a surface that I was going to stain, you can still see the difference. It's not huge and you can only see it close up, but you can still see it. So if you ever plan on staining something and wood filling it, know that there is, there is a noticeable, you know, seam to it. It's not completely perfect, but we're going to go ahead and sand out this whole piece of furniture now before we start painting. It's important to sand your piece of furniture. You want to just give it a light, quick sanding before you paint it so that it's got some grit for the paint to hold on to. There were a lot of dings, especially on the drawers. So I really wanted to give those good sandings too, so that everything was flat and ready to be painted and it didn't have any weird texture to it like the old handles had made, left like kind of embedded marks and whatnot so I wanted to sand that all flat out so that we didn't have that going on when we went to go paint and before we paint of course you always want to clean your furniture I literally just use a microfiber cloth with warm water and dish soap and that's just how I clean every piece of furniture it doesn't have to be really you know specific or anything but just clean it off, make sure you get everything off of it really good because if you have debris on it, it's gonna make it harder for the paint to stick to the furniture. Now to get to the fun part. I love using this roller for painting. I use it on almost every project. And then I go ahead and get this for the trim, the you know hard to get areas. These are always my two go-tos. I would share with you guys the color that I used, but I actually paint matched it to my entryway table. And I'll give you guys some more details on how I did that in a minute. But I did get the Valspar paint and primer. Uh, usually my go-to paint as well I always go to Lowe's and just get this paint I actually really like Bayer too as well I think both of them are really good which is a Home Depot like brand but either way both of those paints I really recommend the price point is great I do love Sher Sherwin-Williams but y'all it's just a little too pricey for my liking so I usually stick with the Valspar or the Bayer So 
So paint matching this paint was a task in itself. It took me a few days to get it perfect, but what I did was I went to Lowe's and I had a little piece of uh, backing for my entryway table and I went to Lowe's and had them match that. They matched it and it was just a bit too dark. So I went back and had them because they will take the paint back. If they paint match and it's not exactly right, they will take it back, they'll exchange it. So I went back and I had them basically lower, take that same color, but add, I think it was 25% uh, basically white to it to lower the color. And that was still just a tiny bit too dark. So if you went in and put another 10%, I believe it was, Thankfully, he was able to use the same pan, but he went in and add about 10%, and then that literally, this color is perfect. It matches so perfectly. I am so impressed that I was able to do this and pull it off. My husband and I really love our entryway table. We love the color of it. So to be able to match that color, and this is going to be behind the couch by the windows. So you're not gonna see it from the entryway because the couch covers it so it's not gonna be on top of each other, but I just like bringing a part of the entryway into the living room and kind of blending those two rooms together. Now we are working on the trim work, which is my least favorite part to do. I'm not even gonna lie to you guys, it's my least favorite part to do. <laughs> but the first coat, I always do the trim work after I do the first coat on the whole body. But for the second coat, I start with the trim because I find that when you start with the trim, or say it's your last coat really, you wanna do the trim first because it the roller blends those lines from the from doing the trim work whereas i've noticed in the past i've done the trim last on each coat and you can see where like the trim is meeting where the roller was but the roller just blends those lines so the first time i see what i can get with the roller and then i know where you know i need to touch up for trim work and then the second time i go in with the trim first now that i know what needs to be touched up for the trim work All right guys, here we are on day two. The paint is all dry and now I'm going to de-stress the furniture. And honestly, I wasn't even planning on de-stressing the furniture, but my kids had knocked over the drawers a few times and it had gotten scuffed up. So I figured, you know what, I'm just gonna de-stress it because it's I'm not going back and repainting it. I didn't have time to do that. And I do like the way the furniture looks when it's distressed. So it wasn't a big deal, but I wasn't originally planning on de-stressing it until, you know, a few pieces got a few dings and were de-stressed on their own. So I'm really happy I did it in the long run though, because the color underneath was such a great uh, complement to this color. So when I actually did de-stress it, I thought that was, you know, it looked really good. It was worth it in the long run. I was thinking about it, wasn't sold on it, but I'm happy I did it anyways.
Once again, before we start putting any paint or top coat or anything on, you wanna make sure that your furniture is clean. I'm not using water this time. I'm just using a microfiber cloth to really grab the dust and get everything off. We are going to use this Minowax water-based polyacrylic in clear matte. This is always my go-to. I like to apply it with a foam roll, a foam brush. It calls for a paintbrush, but I don't like the paint strokes from the brush on it. So I always use a foam roller. That's just my favorite one. I love the result from that. So use whatever you would like on it. It calls for a paintbrush, like I said, but the foam and these things are so cheap and inexpensive. I do make sure that with each coat, I use a different one because they will start falling apart and you don't want them getting into your project because polyacrylic is really sticky. So once it gets in there, it's really hard to get it out. So I do use a different foam brush for every layer. I always just follow the instructions on the can whenever I'm using a stain or a poly or even a paint. I always follow the directions on the can and on the poly it says to let it dry for two hours and then you want to give it a light sanding in between coats of poly. I used, I believe it called for a 220 grit sandpaper. So I just used that in between coats. You really just wanna make sure that everything's flat and if you know for some reason there was some drippage or something like that you want to make sure that you get that all and start with a flat surface when you do your next coat i went ahead and did two coats of poly on the entire body and then i did a third coat on the top just because i am going to be using the top as basically as like a coffee table it's right behind our couch we don't have a coffee table so we will be putting drinks and stuff on this and i will be getting coasters for it but it will be heavily used, so I wanted to do three coats. I probably could have even done four coats. Honestly, if you're going to use a piece of furniture on a regular basis, if there's going to be wet stuff on it, there's going to be you know kids rolling their toys on it or anything, you really want to make sure you put three to four coats on it just to really protect it. Now we're gonna go ahead and put our new hardware on the drawers. I got this hardware off Amazon. It was super affordable. I think it was five pieces for seven or eight dollars. So totally inexpensive and affordable. And I really knew that I wanted to go with black. I wasn't completely sold on what exactly shape I was gonna do. I really love the cup handles. But at the end of the day, I really wanted to do something a little bit different than what I usually do. So I went ahead with these handles. I don't know if they'll stay forever. I might end up changing them out eventually. But for now, I like them. And like I said, you really just can't be affordable. All right, friends, here is the finished piece. I am so happy with how this came out. I am so happy with the color and the finish and it just looks so good. I feel like I really just brought this piece back to life. Thank you guys so much for choosing to click on this video. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to hit that subscribe button if you're new and give this video a thumbs up and I will catch you guys on the next one. Bye.